Hi, our friend at Eurotas. I am uh, Sigma Gurkan here with Stanley Kripner. Greetings, Stanley. So, friend at the Eurotas Congress in October. The first question that there is is could you summarize what does it mean for you to wake up in terms of transpersonal consciousness? Well, actually, I have a very close connection to this term because one of my former students, Steve Taylor, wrote his doctoral dissertation on awakenings. And since that time, he has taught courses on the topic, he's written a book on the topic, he's written other articles on the topic. And what he did for his dissertation was to interview a number of people who had an experience in their life that awakened them. Sometimes they didn't use exactly that term, but they were awakened in what way? They awakened to realize that they were part of a larger reality. The awakening represented a change in their worldview. Now, the people we interviewed, of course, were from Great Britain, by and large, and so they were part of the Western paradigm that emphasizes sharp divisions between people and a sharp division between the world of human beings and the world of other animals and other forms of life. And this very individualistic paradigm is something that, for better or for worse, has led to advances in medicine, advances in different types of healing, and it serves its purpose. But now, for people to realize they're part of a larger whole, they can make even more changes to their advantage and the advantage of people around them. And, of course, this type of awakening is especially pertinent today when we hear so much about climate change. If people do not awaken to the fact that they're part of a larger life form, a larger energy field, they won't feel motivated to clean up the environment, the land, the skies, the water, etc. I should add that one could make a case that people can be awakened to something that's not so positive. Some people operating under different types of persuasion and stress, to join a cult or a militant movement, even a terrorist movement, once they feel connected to a movement, a religion, a cult, whatever, which is larger than themselves. So like everything in this field, yes, there are positive reasons to being awakened and result, but there's a shadow side that we dare not ignore and must keep our eyes on. So that's my history of the term awakening. And Waking something up, that it's to fascinating use. that you bring that in because very often we only look at the positive side and wanted to have the part that goes more toward enlightenment. But as I hear very clearly in the great message for transpersonal psychology, that we cannot be really transpersonal without also taking care of our environment because it's one unity of existence. That's what I hear. And to wake up to this one unity mm -hmm. of existence. Thank you. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, good heavens. That's part of being awakened. You're right. Yeah. Uh, you can't, like I always say about transpersonal psychology, you can't lose the ego unless you've found your ego first. Which are, in your experiences of life, the most awakening experiences you had? I think that one awakening experience occurred when I was a teenager and was attending a summer camp. My parents were always eager to have me interact with groups of people my own age, and so they sent me off to Boy Scout camp to 4-H, which is a farm organization camp, and thank heavens they did. It really made it easier for me to socialize having that background. So on one occasion, I was in northern Wisconsin in the United States. There was a afternoon break, and I simply decided to explore the environment, the beautiful land that the camp was located on, with a lot of trees, a lot the forest, and as I walked around, what should I see at my feet? A little baby fawn, baby deer. And I was so moved by this, I felt a very strong resonance with the fawn. And it's like at that moment, I know that I was part of a larger life field. That realization has really stuck with me. As a matter of fact, I realized that was important. I went back to my cabin, grabbed my camera, bought my camera back to the spot and took a picture of the baby fawn, which I kept all these years to keep reminding me of that interconnection. So that was one experience that I can tell you about. And, of course, many people have awakening experiences with psychedelics. My awakening experiences were before I even tried psychedelics for the first time. 
But I did have an experience with the herbal mixture ayahuasca, which I first, of course, encountered in Brazil, the shamans I worked with in Brazil. I had one ayahuasca experience in which I felt a kinship with all the people in the room and then extended outside of the room to include all life forms and even non-life forms like stones and rocks and water. It was an incredible experience. Again, these experiences reinforce the connectedness that we have, which we too often ignore. Yeah, I think you speak also from my heart, and I know we are very similar on that level, that if you cannot bring this knowledge and that beauty into life and practice it, then it just stays abstract knowledge. And Oh, you are so yeah. right, you are so right. The, the information that we get, especially the awakening information, during one of these experiences is something that doesn't do any good until we start to apply it to our daily life. This is something that I've always felt because I'm always very practically oriented mm -hmm. and it's something that one does read about the literature on the topic You're right that leads us to the third question though which suggestions of tools would you propose to a younger generation in order to waking up is there anything yes that I think you that give la as a guidance yeah. I think that the current younger generation is actually more awakened than my generation. You certainly see the number of young people involved in the ecology movements, for example. You also see a lot of young people involved in various peace movements of one sort or another. And you also see young people involved in campaigns to give credence to people of different skin colors, people of different sexual orientations, people of different economic groups, people of different cultures. I think that this is an important concern. Do you realize that only half of the people in the United States have ever been to another country? That does not speak very well for global consciousness, what you do with awakening experiences. The more one travels, the more one is exposed, exposed to different points of view. Not all the travels are positive, of course. Again, you take what you get, you make the most of it. But I think that any program that allows younger people to engage in traveling is a good investment. Also, I think that any experience that young people can have with local groups that are of a different orientation, the more they will learn. And a lot of this now can be on the internet, especially with the Skype and the Zooms, and it certainly is true of the social networks. And again, social networks have their shadow side, as you know from recent headlines, in terms of people being bullied on the internet. I have co-authored a book, Understanding Suicide Allure, And we have several examples how bullying on the internet can actually lead to tragic results. So there's a shadow side to all of these things. But I think that there are enough opportunities now for young people to have a waking that certainly did not exist previously. Thank you so much. I think you are one of the few who also gives us some warning. So, or better to learn how to differentiate between the qualities that are offered. And there's so much on this in this field or market, or as we call it, this suggestion how younger people can explore, as I hear you, is being in contact with yourself, come in contact with your inner truth and inner ground, and from that place explore reality and expand your reality from there. So, oh, you're so right. I think the introduction of artificial intelligence, again, is going to be a catalyst for many young people. Let's hope it's a positive catalyst, but where one can actually see one's thoughts expressed by an entity which is not their own and sometimes doing it very well might aid these connections too. Thank you so much, Stanley. That is, thank you for all people at Eurotas and in the transpersonal psychology movement to carry forward the notion, the idea, and the vision and the mission that you, your own personal mission that you carry that into life. And of course, I'd like to encourage people to attend the Eurotas conference in October. Rare opportunity. Now these conferences can be held fairly safely again as a result of the pandemic. As you know, conferences were canceled for a couple of years, but now is a chance for people to get together physically as well as virtually. Thank you so much, Stanley.